All right, guys, so this is a 50 horsepower and a 12 and a half horsepower electric motor. It operates at two different speeds, 1800 and 900 RPM. Now the customer needs this motor back ASAP and I know somebody's gonna say, well, what are you doing making a TikTok about it? Because that's what I do, I make TikTok videos about it. This is a four pole and an eight pole variable torque electric motor. Now we have to pull this connection back. We have to make sure that we put it back the way it was because two speed motors are not just variable torque. They could be constant torque or they could be constant horsepower. I'm gonna show you this data plate so you can look at some of the information. And you can see that it's straight 460 volts. So we're not doing anything to the voltage to change the speed. We're simply changing the connection. We need to take a ton of information out of this thing before we can even begin to rewind it. So some of you guys have asked, why don't you just reach out to the manufacturer? They don't like to share any type of engineering or winding data to anybody. You can see as the sleeving, as it goes into the slot there, there's two wires. So when we pull one of these coils out, we're gonna count how many wires we have and we're gonna divide it by two and that's how many turns we're going to have. This is a 2Y and a 4Y connected electric motor. After I've positively identified that connection, I'm gonna cut all of those coil ends off and we're just gonna start pulling these coils out. We can look at our groups here. So we have 12 groups of four. You'll see there's a phase paper and then you see four coils and another piece of phase paper. And sometimes they will insulate mid group depending on the voltage stress or volts per coil. So don't just go by that. Next, we're gonna need to count this coil. So I counted 42 wires, but we're gonna divide that by two because we have two wires in hand, which gives us 21 turns. I hope you wrote that down because I'm just flying by the seat of my pants here. So next, we're going to look at this coil span. What slot does it go in and what slot does it come out of? That's going to be our coil span. And at this point, too, we're also going to take note of the shape of this coil, how long it is, the extension, how far it sticks out of the stack. This is all important information. If we make these coils too long, the motor might not fit back together. If we make them too long, the resistance increases and then the heat increases and this motor is going to have a shorter lifespan. While I'm pulling these coils out, I notice those burnt balls of copper. So that looks like a turn to turn short. If it was phase to phase, it would be from one phase of coils in between that phase paper to another phase of coils. But this is in the one coil itself. So this could happen from abrasion, contamination. Either way, we got to pull all those coils out, sandblast this thing, get it prepped so that we can rewind it. After everything's been sandblasted, painted, prepped, and ready to go, we're going to go ahead and start putting all of these coils in. So there's 48 coils inside this electric motor, 12 groups of four coils per group. Now, I'm not a lazy lap winder, so when we get back to where we started, we gotta lift those coils up we put in first, continue laying underneath it, and I did tie this every other slot. So you can see our phase insulation. When we're putting that tie string through there, we don't wanna pull so hard that we actually pull that phase insulation up and we're no longer protected between our phases. I like to mark coil end number one and coil end number two. Now I have orientation of everywhere around this motor. Since we have no jumpers and we just have the two Ys, I'm gonna go ahead and get those two Ys knocked out really quick. Don't ask me why. I just have a way that I like to do things. So then we're gonna start twisting these Ys together. We'll start attaching to our leads. I kind of do these in different ways, depending on the motor, how many wires in hand, what size leads we're dealing with. And then we have to braze all of these connections. We'll tape them, we'll sleeve over them. And then we'll run quite a few of electrical tests to make sure that this thing is satisfactory before we dip it in a varnish tank and bake it in an oven. So you can see our connection in here. And then we're gonna go ahead and move on to some of those tests. So this is the low impedance open stator test. We'll use a little dummy rotor like this aluminum can. People like to say this is fake whenever I post these, so we'll go ahead and let the can stop, and we'll put it back in, and it'll rotate again. This is currently operating on our high speed, our 1800 RPM. We're going to switch that over to our 900 RPM. We'll do the same thing. We'll put that can back in there, make sure that we have rotation. Notice it's spinning in the opposite direction. That's because we changed our phase sequence when we disconnected it. We'll use a thermal camera. We can check, make sure we don't have any uneven heating. And that's about all the tests we're gonna do before we dip it, bake it, and then we can actually run this thing. So on our low speed, again, 900 RPM. We switch it over to our high speed, 1800 RPM. We'll let this run for a little extended period of time, make sure that nothing is heating again unevenly where the bearings sit, anything like that. After that, we can clean it all up, paint it, put it back on the pallet, and we're not putting that Peckerhead box back on because it wasn't on when we got it and we don't know the orientation. Cheers, guys.